In this video, I'm going to be breaking down kind of what I do and what I think about whenever I play a live online game of Madden 21 as I'm preparing for the Madden Classic this weekend. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. Now if you're new to the channel and you don't know what my channel is about, my channel is all about how to become a better player at Madden 21. And if you want to get better at this game, I highly encourage you to take a second and hit the subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. That's going to allow you to know whenever we release a new video. There's also a little bell icon that you can click um, that will send notifications to your phone if you want to be notified every time a new video goes live, which is about every day. All right, guys, so we're coming out with our bunch tight end uh, offense here, and this thing is absolutely insanely good. As I'm playing on the Xbox, trying to get used to the controller um, before uh, before Xbox um before the tournament this weekend because I normally play on PlayStation, but playing on Xbox today, uh, trying to kind of lab a little bit, honestly. Um, and there's a play that I haven't been running out of this offense that I actually need to, and that's the curl flat corner. The curl flat corner um, is really, truly one of the most, I think, just phenomenal, phenomenal plays, uh, as, of course, I'm getting a little bit bagged here. But anyway, Aaron Jones gets out and goes in for a touchdown. So on offense, I'm running the gun bunch tight end offense out of the run heavy playbook. That's my favorite offense right now in the game. And then on defense, I'm still in 3-3-5, but I'm running it a little bit differently than I have. Um, and that means that I'm running more match principles. Um, with defense, it's a little bit different than offense. Offense you might be a gun bunch guy. You might be a trips guy. You might be a bunch tight end. You might be a spread. You know, you're going to change your formation a lot. With defense, it's not so much the case. Um, it's more of your coverage scheme behind your base set. So you might be a 3-4 guy, a 4-3 guy, a 3-3-5 guy, or whatever, a nickel. But you're going to – really what you're saying is I'm a zone guy or I'm a man guy or I'm a, ma I'm a match guy or whatever. So I'm actually uh, basing a lot more out of match coverage lately and been really in the lab heavy – trying to perfect it for this weekend because the one offense that really can give me some trouble um, or just the one that I feel like I need to lab against the most is the gun bunch. I think the gun bunch is the, one of the hardest offenses to stop if you're playing somebody that really, really knows um, how to execute it at a high level this year. I think bunch is definitely the way to go. Um, I personally think that bunch tight end is a little bit better, but they use a lot of the same uh, principles. So, anyways, all that to say, uh, here we are. We're going to set our audibles up and for this matchup. Now, it looks like he's going to come out in some Trey Y flex, um, which I don't see that a ton. So, uh, I'm just going to kind of start out with my base defense here um, and just hope, you know, kind of hope that that works well. Um, here you see some interesting audibling around with Gronkowski. Uh, looks like we've got a little C route, a little crosser. We should be able to take the crosser, and there the match defense does exactly what it's supposed to do as Kader Holman gets it right off the rip here, and that was Brad stick work. I probably should have cut back inside there. I thought I could just get to the outside, but um, good job by Tom Brady to be able to stop me. But defensively, uh, I feel really, really good right now against Trips tight end. And I know I say that, and sure enough, I can tell you that right now. And on Saturday, you know, when Saturday comes, I might be, you know, you know, just getting dominated. So, you know, that's just, that's also something that I'm obviously thinking about. But anyways, I feel really good um, against Trips tight end as we just give him the ball back with a stupid truck right there from Tunyon. Um, I think that I'm probably going to start playing on conservative on – this I do like to use the double juke, but you can use the double juke still if you play on conservative. So anyway, um, let's see here. He's not running trips tied in. He's running something a little bit different here. So I'm trying to set my defense up, and I want to try. Since he's giving me a little bit of extra time here, we're going to make another adjustment. I want to try a new adjustment on this. Um, now I see how he turns it into a trips tied in. At this point, I think I could man line and press and it would basically lock up there you see there's that defense there that match defense taking away crossing routes um and so far we're two for two on defense two plays two turnovers uh defense is doing its job offense just needs to not give the ball back to him so you know again defensively this defense is really tough to move against um in my opinion right now i feel really good on 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 defense you know pretty much Essentially, it comes down to, I think, stopping slant routes. If I can stop slant routes and crossing routes, um, 
I'm going to be okay. If I can't stop those two routes, those are the routes that can give me the most amount of trouble. Our, our crossing routes from like a, a, a the proper type of crossing route and then also uh, the proper type of slant route. So those are some things that I'm trying to work on um, a little bit on the on the defensive side of the ball. Offensively, um, one of the new plays that I'm really liking out of this bunch tight end that I didn't run a ton before because I honestly – um, to be honest, I, I wasn't doing a great job at reading it, but you'll see here, this play right here, tight end corner is super glitchy and super effective against zone drops. As you see, he's been running a lot of, uh, Tampa two kind of, and I think he has his zone drops back to 30. They're at least at 25. They might be back to 30 because on that quarter route from Devonte Adams, they got back on that relatively easily. So um, they might they might be set back that far. But as you can see, tight end corner is the only play that I know. Um, it's not the only play, but it's the only route. The route to the, the post there, which can be found. That route can be found in other formations. But that specific route beats every single zone drop, and it also beats man coverage. So it literally is a route that has to be usered. Or you have to have some kind of deep zone over there without a tight end streak to be able to pull the zone. So some type of match coverage or something like that um, would be really what they're looking at. And one of the tricks with tight end corner, there's actually some motioning uh, tricks from bunch tight end that most people don't utilize. Um, even I don't use, utilize it as much as I as I probably should. But, but anyway, all right, we're back on defense now. And what I like to do... Uh, against trips when I'm starting out is kind of this defense. I think it really does a good job against crossers. And there you see, oh, we were almost three for three. I had the, I had it bagged. That play right there is the play that is kind of my, my kryptonite. And he's going to go inside zone here. Um, is the Texas route. The Texas route to the running back is one of the hardest routes to stop if it's paired with a crossing route or a post route. Um, when it's paired with a, uh, a crossing route, it's really, really hard um, to consistently stop it. So uh, right here, this defense does, I think, a pr as good a job as any at stopping it right here. Wishing the best mid, take the running back. And there you see defense does a really good job. Somehow Gronkowski caught that. I felt like my defense was there. But as you see, I mean, against trips, um, you know, we're not doing too bad. Now, right here, um, we're a little bit of a step behind here on our adjustments, so um, he's kind of throwing me off a little bit with his with his motion snapping. But basically, we should only have to take that away. And, of course, somehow Mike Evans just mossed again. Okay, so shade up. A little curl flat. Trying to make that a more tight throw, and there we go. We were able to get the stop there. So he's doing some stuff with that crosser, and that's kind of his move. He's basically going to run a crossing route with the Texas right underneath, and then um, sometimes corner the tight end and sometimes streak him. So those are some, uh, in my opinion, those are some you know pretty solid route combos uh, by this guy here. Should be an inside zone. Nope, PA crosser stock. I'm just going to take the crossing route away. And he hits Scotty Miller for a touchdown. I I got to be okay with that. Like, I can't get mad at that. That's one of those things where, you know, if they're going to give him 500 minutes to throw in the pocket, you've, you've got to be live with that, in my opinion. Like, defensively, we played really good. He was – I had a guy right there. You know, I got to live with that and be okay with that if, they're, if that's how they're going to score. So, I think he is – he did score a touchdown. Okay, so he did score a touchdown. So what I'm going to do is take this opportunity to make sure all of my stuff is set up properly. As you see right here, I'm missing one of my other adjustments. And I don't really like to block field goals unless like there's a game on the line kind of thing. Just because too many people that I play, like they'll do fake field goal run or stuff like that. So 14-7. to 7, Offense, I'm pretty sure... I think... I think my I think I think he gets the ball. So we need to go down. This has been a jam-packed first quarter though. We're only, we're still in the first quarter somehow. So a lot of points put up. And I feel okay on defense. I don't feel great because that crossing route 
is not supposed to be that good against the man coverage. Um, now, he's running a lot of Tampa 2. So whenever I play somebody that runs a lot of Tampa 2, uh, one of my favorite plays to go to is basically this concept right here. It's essentially a flood on both sides. But you'll see this, this route to Valdez Scantling normally does a pretty good job of beating Tampa 2 if he's in Tampa 2. And right there, um, I think he was in Tampa 2. It just didn't look like it. It looked like he was in a cloud flat, the, or um, a quarter flat zone. So good job by him. And we're going to go back to that tight end corner play just to kind of keep it simple. This is literally, I'm not kidding you when I say this is probably my favorite play right now. Uh, I find that route right there to be ridiculously hard to stop consistently. There's also a route out of the. Uh, it's actually some. It's actually a reason why I think the Carolina bunch offense could be a really tough offense for the Madden Classic. Um, is the in route to the running back out of that formation? But here you see once again Tampa two, and we'll just let him run, 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 run right over the zone drop. And as you can see, I think that was a uh, a 45 yard dot. You know. It's just a really, really good route, and uh, it just does really good stuff. And he's running Tampa, too, which is um, kind of an interesting, kind of honestly a little bit of an interesting strategy. Now, right here, I'm going to try to – I'm going to see how this corner route does smart routed. If it doesn't do good on smart route, I will – yep, yep, I need to I need to not throw that. So that's that's on me. So I think he literally, and I should have pass led that outside instead of up. I was trying to see if that would get over that. That pretty much guarantees me that he is running his drops on probably um, on on probably like thirty, I would say. So that's that's another thing that we have to, you know, just be aware of here. All right, let's see if we can do that. That adjustment right there by me is actually, I think, really, really important because he's turning this into trips tight end. Now you see they match the crosser, and I'm even there for it. But now you see they match the crosser, crossing right a lot better when you do that. So what I did, and I don't know if I even – I don't even know. Yeah, I can't do it here. So when he motions that tight end uh, – I need a shade coverage up. You'll see that when he motions that tight end right there – that's my cue in inside zone here. Let's just tackle. Um, whenever he motions his tight end to the right, that's my cue to, to basically man align my defense. And the reason why you do that is because essentially he's creating um, a complete trips tight end feel and look to his offense when he does that motion. So basically what I have to defend is 100% trips tied in that's what it that's what it really is and you'll notice that i get a lot better match whenever i man align versus when i don't um so that's my that's my uh strategy so you see he did that so we're going to do that right there and now what you'll see i need to get that man up there we go now now you should see we should have a lot better d and really all we should take is that and there's Perry getting over the top and playing great defense. And that's 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 kind of what we've talked about a little bit. And again, this is you know fully broken down in the ebook. It's um, the, the complete defensive system is really, really good. This is just one little base call against trips tight in, is that man aligning that coverage is so so valuable. So, anyways, he's running 30 yard zone drops. I'm gonna try to see if I can just hit him. I just want to kind of test this. This is kind of just for my own personal. Um, you know, I just kind of personally want to know this. Uh, we're going to put this option route out there. And we're going to see um, Devontae should get open here. Yep, he does. On the sideline, over 30 yard zone drops. And that's what I'm talking about. That's another, um, That was I think that was another 45 yard dot. So you have, and this is what's really cool about, uh, about bunch tight end, is you have that on both sides. So for example, let's say that I wanted to do this. Right, I can do this, and then I could basically, um, you know, I could do something like this, right? This combination is insanely hard to guard. You see the little option route right there, and then you have these curls 
that you can hit on both sides. So it's it's kind of the same curl flat concept, but the beauty of it is you can do it on both sides, and that's um, a, a kind of a trips tight end thing. And then you have to play um, inside switch, which is kind of a trips tight end thing as well. And the beauty of this, you have a lot of trips tight end concepts, but you have them from a bunch type of feel, and you also have some really, really good uh, bunch concepts like the curl flat corner um, or, you know, different things like that, like mesh or, or something. So anyways, um, that's kind of my, my spiel on why why bunch tight end is the best offense in the game. And if you haven't gotten the ebook yet, I would highly encourage you to do that. Right here, little little laser right there. He's playing an interesting defense. I've never seen um, – I just haven't seen Tampa 2 a ton. Tampa 2 is good like as like a change-up. The problem is if someone like me knows Tampa 2 is what you're going to be in, like it should not be a hard game. It should be a relatively easy game. As long as there's no throw out of sacks, you know, it pretty much should be GG's in the chat if somebody's going to consistently sit and cover 2 all game against a bunch tight end. So, and again, the, the full offense is in the description. If you want to get a free sample of the offense, that is uh, in my text message membership, which you can pick up that for free by just texting me. Uh, my number is in the top left-hand corner of your screen. It's 812-216-3644. All right, so, um, so anyway, defensively here, we're going to jump back on, on defensive side of the ball. And looks like Trey Y Flex is going to be the thing. And let's see here. We're going to shift him. And he's actually doing me like a huge, huge favor with how long he's taking uh, to do his routes and things like that. And there's Jair Alexander doing what Jair does. So if he doesn't run that tight end on like a streak, if he runs him on a corner route, like it's going to be very, very hard uh, for him to consistently. And this might be a little bit more of a quick snap. And that's literally all I have to take. Oh, dang. That's a huge that's a huge click on sack because he was probably going to dot me. It looked like he was playmaker in the running back. Um, to the sideline, his, his playmaker was kind of kind of not working properly for him. And so we were able to get in there and get the sack. And there you see, there's the setup again. And you see, look how good it matches. Look how good that matches. Look at that defense. I didn't even have to use anybody. And that's great defense right there. That's... That's trip. That's that's trips defense. It's not. It's not necessarily just trips tight end. It's pretty much any trips you could play it similar. Um, the other thing that you'll realize as you watch throughout this game, if he stays with this strategy of motioning that tight end over every time, that's that's not a good move for him. Like it's not. There's just not a route that he can go to that's going to be super super good. The angle route's the best chance he's got, and he doesn't even have the best ankle route. He has the hot routed one, whereas the best angle route is actually from the play curl flat in trips tied in, which is in the Raiders book or it's, it's in several other books as well. But, but, um, that's, but, but, but the problem is he's, he's only running three by one. So what I mean by that is he's only running three wide receivers. He's only running trips. He's not motioning out of his trips. So it's making it relatively easy for me to kind of sit on the crossing route or whatever. And I don't even have to use it. You're seeing the match coverage does its job. And uh, and we're not having to do anything with zone drops. And therefore, we're not leaving ourselves vulnerable to, to slants and, 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 and hitches and stuff like that. So, so anyways, um, ball on the 29. Get back on the defensive side of the ball. little quick snap right here. It's actually a really good quick snap. That's actually a really good quick snap because he hasn't done that yet. And we got clicked off again. There's going to match, match him, match him, match him, match him. Yep, good D. The problem is when he quick snaps, and this is where trips tight end can get into some problems, 
when people from trips tied in try to quick snap it's really in my opinion not a great strategy for them because that means they can't they can't set up their spacing concepts so you can just sit i mean you can just sit on stuff like i mean you could probably honestly just sit in man coverage like you'll see right here i'm gonna just i'm just gonna play man uh just because of the way that he's playing um and then i'm gonna drop angle route there yep there you go yep so I mean that's that's what I'm saying. So when they start quick snapping you, I'll just kind of mix in some man coverage. Um, another defense that does a pretty good job is different types of cover, uh, not cover twos, but um, cover three like Mabel stuff. And right here, I'm a little bit vulnerable to a streak. If he throws a streak, I might be vulnerable. I'm gonna go ahead and just take the crosser up the field, and I just got lasered. I, I can't be mad at my defense. I feel like I had the right call. I just didn't have the right speed. Um, Jackson wasn't fast enough to get over there. So something that I'll do, if that is a consistent thing, is I'll swap these guys. King's a lot better than, than Jackson is. Looks like this guy's going to go ahead and kneel it out. I don't know why. I guess he's trying to take all the clock. But, but that's another thing that I'll do. You know, just kind of swap those guys out. Um, game management as far as in the half goes, it probably wasn't the smartest thing for me to call that timeout right at the rip. I mean, it is what it is, but, and I'm surprised he's not running the ball or trying to score here, but you know, what I probably should have done is let him, let the clock run, let him come out and try to go quick and then call the timeout. Cause now you're going to see, now he's just going to, if he needs it out, He'll be able to take a pretty decent amount of the clock, because um, I believe he still has his he still has his third down. Yeah, so he could take all the he could take forty seconds. So that's gonna leave me with about forty seconds left or so, maybe a little bit less than that. So you know, realistically, about in a, in a game of Madden, you know, forty seconds is not a is is a is a decent chunk of time, but it's not a lot of time. So anyway. All right here, just running quarters. That's just base quarters, man. Look at that defense. Just go get him. And that was actually huge that he did that. So that right there is just base quarters. Um, I really like that call in the red zone because if you if you change the quarter, I don't even know if you should change the quarter flats or not, but my theory is if you take the quarter flats and you turn those into seam flats, seam flats do a good job against two things. They do a decent job against the flats, and they do a decent job because they get a jam on the slots. So you could you could do that, and then you could have a three rec with your user in the middle field. It does okay. It does okay. It, it's it's you know it's probably vulnerable to something, but the seam flats are also cool because they match onto stuff like um, like if they're if they run like a slant or something, I think that the seam flats will match. I don't know the exact rules on that. Uh, I'm still learning a little bit about that defense. But I see the seam flats as being very, very effective compared to quarter flats. The way that I've heard it explained is quarter flats play more like hook zones and seam flats play a little bit more like um, like, like, not, like not, not hard flats, but they're like the hard flats of match coverage. That might be a good way to say it. So they play they play more flat, like they play more of the outside. Whereas the quarters play more interior, like streaks and stuff. So anyway. Enough of that lecture. Right here, that was actually all around terrible by me. I couldn't decide what to do there. I should have stopped running. I was fully expecting him to to send his spy. But because of the way that he's playing, um, because of the way that he's playing, just running a lot of cover two. Uh, I can pretty much feel like I can hit this route to. Actually, I think he swapped it into cover four, and we're just gonna have to throw that away. I think he had to have outside quartered that guy. I don't know. Maybe it's because I didn't have a flat, but uh, we're gonna go to curl flat corner here and just try to flood this uh, this cover two that he's running. I'll watch for triangle to be wide open. And Devonte dropped it. Awesome. Um, we could we could punt this, but we're gonna go for it just for fun. 
Because he's got it. I think he's running. I'm trying to even figure out. He's got to be running like 30 yard cloud flats, maybe 15 yard curl flats. I mean, it's like ridiculous the amount of prevent that he's doing. So, right here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to this setup. This is a little bit more for um, if they're running something like what this guy's running. This is a little, it's, it's kind of like tight in corner. But he's running a lot of zone. And we're going to throw a book. Threw that a little bit late. So defensively, I just kind of want honestly, I wanted to see if I was in the red zone again. I wanted to test out this this quarter's um, uh, scheme. So the trick here is you're going to see we, we should get a jam on both of those guys. That's going to help a lot with the quarter. There you see it. So the And I don't think I've talked a lot about compression. You'll see that one of the things that people will do if they know that you're running quarters is you'll see that they're going to run um, some type of compression set. And the reason people do that is because they get free releases and then they can kind of glitch out. The seam flats do a really good job at taking a lot of that stuff away. That's, that's another reason why um, the seam flats are so important to me. Is I'll see if I if I'm running against compression, that corner route that normally would beat a seam um, like a cover four, it won't beat um, it won't beat this one because of the way that it's structured. Anyway, quick snap and stretch, guess good play. That that seems to be the strategy. Just come out and call stretch and pray to God that you score. So, I mean, he got himself back in the game. I think he gets ball at half, too. So, you know, I actually got ourselves a little bit of a game here. Obviously, I should have punted the ball. But this has been a very high-scoring, uh, high-action game, which has been fun. Now, I've got five seconds left. If he's going to stay in that cover, two, I'm going to go to PA Cross here. Just in the off chance that he's not in cover, two, or that he's in cover, two. Um... This route to Valdez Scantling normally gets open against cover two. So I'm going to run with another, um, you know, two streaks and then a drag I can play maker. And we'll see. And we'll just play maker the drag up. That's fine. So I definitely think he's making some adjustments on those outside guys. They're playing deep, deep, deep. Um,. When I get the ball back, you're going to see an underneath clinic. I mean, he's basically begging me to throw, you know, drags and slants and posts. And I'm being a little bit stubborn because I'm trying to burn him because I just – I'm surprised that he's running so much cover too um, this late into the season. But anyway, so you're going to see cover four quarters again. Now, I can't even remember how he scored, honestly. Sometimes – I forget when I'm talking uh, just about what, what all has happened. But essentially, I think he had the crossing route. I'm pretty sure he got over the top of us on a crossing route. Uh, and then obviously we gave him uh, we gave him seven. So I'll be interested to see uh, right here. Inside zone. It's actually a really good call. Uh I think he'll go a little bit more up tempo. I think he'll go a little bit more quick snappy ish. He's had some success with that. All right, so he did do that motion again. There you see we've got the defense for that. And depending on what he does, let the match coverage do its thing. And another dot, man. Scotty Miller is. Scotty Miller is, is definitely doing his thing for him. I'll tell you that. And we messed up. We messed up. Should be inside zone. This is interesting right here. Pistol bunch tight end, probably strong power, maybe. Okay, he gets in. Wow, okay. That's probably on me. If I would have shifted my line left, I probably would have had that bagged. So good, good, good drive by him. Um you gotta believe he's quick step in a stretch here. I'm stuck on my guy. Classic me. 
slant. That's mine. Take that away. Let's pick that off, Adrian. And all right. So, I mean, 23-28, third quarter. I mean, props to this guy hanging in there. We've handed him uh, that crossing route way too much. I, I honestly think it's going to be best for our scheme if we just take the crossing route and give the running back up. Um, I'm just really trying not to give that running back up. Because the running back is the route that, like, is the, in my opinion, out of trips tied in, really out of any formation, the running back is actually the hardest to stop. So, anyway, based on the way that he's been playing, tight end corner is really the play for this guy. So we're just going to run that um, and just force him to force him to stop Aaron Jones. I think Aaron Jones will be uh, one of the most important players for me going into this weekend. We are going to run a little PA boot over on him. Take our delay fade. This time we need to get down. Good job. And now the offense is starting to cook a little bit more with gas. And we're going to go to inside switch here. Primarily just because um, the way he's playing, he's not really taking that route right there away. So we should have been throwing that a lot already. And we just been a little bit of a little bit of stubbornness on my part. Sometimes that happens. That's one thing I got to really tame uh, a little bit in the challenge or the classic. If I'm super stubborn, even though they're giving me, you know, fullback dive every play, you know, you kind of got to take what the defense gives you. Anyway, that right there, that was actually a good adjustment. He cross-manned him onto the running back. The thing about Aaron Jones that people don't realize, and this is what makes him so good, um, is it is really, really hard to consistently stop him because of his ability. I think it's like matchup nightmare or something like that. But it basically means the way the ability works – is against man coverage, he's going to basically, I don't even know if it's man coverage, like he basically just can catch the ball really well. That's what it comes down to. So anyway, so when they're running, you know, this is where tight end corner can really become um, just a tough play to stop. Right here, nice little up the seam route. Um, and we're going to go to inside switch, and we're going to go to our wheel concept because of how much zone he's running. When they run a lot of zone, the double flat is really, really good read. Um, and nice read there in the back of the end zone. MVS, 4-6, touchdown, Packers, and defense is going to get on the field. And hopefully the defense can stop giving up a crossing route because um, I'm surprised that Scotty Miller is beating Adrian Amos like so easily. So. Normally, like if that was Chris Godwin, that would make sense. If that was Devontae Adams, that would make sense. If that was even Antonio Brown, that would make sense. But Scotty Miller shouldn't be beating him like that. So that's that's kind of unfortunate. Anyway. All right, so defensively, we have to stop the crossing route. That's the, that's the bread and butter here. A little inside zone, a little inside zone, good read. And our defense is a little bit slow uh, right now. We're just going to kind of mix it up here and blitz him. And good read. Once again, Scotty Miller, 94 speed. And this is also where you can get adjusted a little bit. So, like, Kadir Holman has 93. Uh, 90 something speed so I'm going to actually switch the two of them just uh, just for this situation uh, I honestly thought with like trips tied in you know what another thing that I could do um, and watch you'll see the cross man will take him better probably nope wide open awesome right now we're playing really really bad defense just so you know should be inside zone here Yep, should have been a fumble if they gave him one. Um, okay, so we got to gather ourselves a little bit, regroup here. Now, th this is a tendency thing, but he literally, he's literally throwing to him every single play. So we're going to move Jair Alexander into that slot.
And we're just not going to give it up. We're going to make him have to go somewhere else. Go somewhere. Anywhere but not, anywhere but the cross, you know. And, I mean, he had, I mean, you probably can even look at instant replay. The running back was probably wide open. But that's just a situational, you know, just a situational thing. Sometimes, sometimes you need to move people around because of how they're matching them up. So, like, for example, Scotty Miller has, um, you know, Scotty Miller only has so much, so much that he can do because of his 94 speed. But that 94 speed is made, is causing me some problems. So what I'll do is, as you saw right there, um, you know, uh, we'll throw a, throw a guy in there. And here, I wasn't ready for this formation. He's probably going to hit me. Gosh, dang it, man. I'm, I'm not playing very good on defense right now. We were playing phenomenal on the first drive. He's just doing random stuff, and sometimes this random stuff can just work because the cover four re requires a lot of adjustments. Like, I probably should literally just run man coverage on this guy and just let it be what it's going to be. But, yeah, defensively, we definitely laid down in the, in the second quarter and the third quarter. So, hopefully we'll get one more opportunity on defense to close this game out. I think we can definitely close it out. Um, it's just we're just messing up, man. We're just giving him crossing route after crossing route after crossing route. So... Anyway, offense is back on the field. We've got to put that behind us and go execute. One of the things I think is super, super hard about Madden that is different than the real NFL is in the real NFL, um, if you have a bad series, bad drive, you don't always have to go right back out there. In Madden, you're always on. The, I mean, you're always on. You know what I mean? So you have to, you have to really put it behind you fast and, and move forward quick, in my opinion, which I'm not always the best at. So inside switch here, just because of what his tendencies are. There's been no flat, but because of his ability, yeah. Because he's using that defensive end, I just don't want to risk it. So that's fine. But as you can see, I mean, the offense definitely can move. Now we'll see if he's in cover two. That was a really good catch by Valdez Scantling. Now, right here, a little bit of game management. So I am winning by five, which means I'm up by a touchdown. So I don't if you know I I can get three points and be in a pretty good spot, you know, just as far as everything goes. So I'm not going to be too risky. One of the things you'll see is like I'm actually going to back. I'm going to go to conservative. You know, this is part of all. All of this is part of preparing for the classic. And obviously, whenever you are playing for, you know, any amount of, like, money or you're playing for even pride, but, you know, definitely if you're playing for money, you don't want to mismanage the clock. Like, clock management is so important. It's such an underrated um, aspect of the game. I'm not always the best at it, and it's always, it almost always will come back to bite me in that situation. So, you see here, I'm kind of setting up my grown man package Going to go into coaching adjustments, make sure I'm on conservative, and take this all the way down to the two-minute warning. And now, you know, really, because, again, I really believe my defense can take care of what he's doing. Um, you know, basically, if I have to, I can go guard the crossing route. I've just been trying to get um, some of my other zone coverages to play right. But the Trey Y flex, because that tight end is flexed, I think that might have something to do with it a little bit. But anyways, um and as you see here, I mean, this is interesting run defense by him. Uh, we're just going to go right into stretch. I form wing stretch is really hard to shoot. And we're going to go down. The reason why we're going down right there is we're taking – we want to take time off the clock. So you'll see here, we'll just literally – we're going to sit. Now he's coming into 3-3-5 wide. One of my favorite little tricks out of I form wing – I actually learned this from one of my uh, good friends, Yashi – Basically, what you do is you're in a situation like this, you know, where obviously they've they've got some they've got a little bit overloaded on the right side. They shifted their line. You'll just playmaker this wing stretch to the left, and you'll see the fullback does a, normally a pretty good job. And you, it's basically you turn it into almost like a not necessarily a dive, but not necessarily a stretch either. It's more like a 26 duo um, and how it works. But this I-form wing is really hard to shoot, especially if you playmaker it to the left side. 
you'll see you'll have a lot of success. So anyways, right here, and we're just going to go down in the backfield, not really risking anything. Again, if I go up by eight and he scores, the amount of time that he's going to have to score, um, I mean, he will have about a minute here. Now, right here, I am going to try to go ahead and punch it in right here. Now that I've taken you know some time, taken some clock, and we'll just come in, and there you see there's a timeout. Now, game management 101. You can always take a false start or delay a game or whatever, right? So I always, 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 always in this situation will come out and at least look at it and see what I see. If he's comes out in an undisciplined defense, you see here, he hasn't ran this all game. He has not ran this all game. You see this is an undisciplined defense. He's running nickel. It looks like big nickel over G. Now, we do know that big nickel over G is really, really good run defense, but he hasn't. he's been in 3-3-5 wide all game. So... We're going to take this all the way down and kind of make him think that we're going to, you know, basically uh, take the, you know, take the delay of game. But we're going to snap this ball. We're going to snap it probably at about five seconds here, kind of catch him napping, and then try to get out and score. And good defense by him. Now, the reason I did that, obviously he can go down and score and win, right? That's 100% possible. But part of the reason that I did that was because there's a minute uh, left in the game. And look at how much field he has to cover. One misread, literally one misread, and the game's over. And you're going to see we're going to set up a cover two defense. And okay, good job. Now see he's inbounds, so now he has to go fast. And now you see us in this right here. A little bit of max coverage man. Take that crosser. That's the only route that he seems to know how to throw. And as you can see, in a situation out of a no-huddle situation where he knows he's, we know he's going to quick snap us, we're prepared. And, and, that, and that to me is a silly play call. Like, look what he just did to himself. I mean, he that's what I'm talking about. So you see kind of the uh, – and he didn't execute very well either. But uh, whoops. Throws into triple coverage. Perry Nickerson seals it. And that's what I'm talking about. Because of the situation on the field, um, it causes him to have to overextend himself a little bit. And he didn't have the time. Now, had he, you know, and again, that's where the quarters defense is so good because the quarters defense, you have to throw over the middle. I mean, you pretty much have to. So, uh, good game to this guy. If you want to get any of the ebooks that I was running, any of the schemes, they're in the description. If you have any questions, go ahead and hit me up via text message. And if you guys want to come hang out on stream, we'll be streaming tonight at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. It looks like this guy's going to go ahead and glitch himself out. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.